Welcome aboard, everybody. I'm here with my lovely friend, Bree. Bree and I used to work together a few years ago for Nissan North America. It was a corporate flight department in America. And Bree is over from Spain, from America, from around the world. We've had lunch together and we're going to have a lovely chat about mindset, confidence, tell some stories, chew the fat, work out what makes us successful in life, what makes us healthy. You've probably noticed I haven't got any teeth. (laughs) (laughs) It's a long story. If you want to find out more, there are some stuff on my YouTube channel about it. But my little false teeth fell out in the middle of the night. I can't find them. I might have swallowed them. I didn't want to go through the loo this morning to find them. So I'm having to do this without. But anyway, it's quite a good one about resilience, isn't it, really? And having to adapt to circumstances. So anyway... Enough about or, me. I don't know whether it's you having to hi, but you having to adapt to circumstances or me having to adapt to the fact that I've got to go out with a toothless hobo for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> bit of both, I yeah, suppose. It was, it was a, Works a, 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 for both of us. It was a new situation for yeah, both of us, wasn't it? Was. it? So anyway, hopefully you guys can understand what I'm saying here. Of course, we we work in a very traditionally, I suppose, well, traditionally male dominated, ninety five percent are still men in the cockpit, but very much the sort of, yeah, the, the alpha male types, although there are very different types of personalities, but, you know, like cars, they like aeroplanes, and 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 I sometimes, you know, wear thin of that a little bit sometimes, and you're in a flight deck for 12 or 15 hours, you've been up for much longer than that either side of it, and then you're going back to the hotel and in the bar afterwards, and I want to develop a, a relationship beyond that, and I find that quite hard sometimes. And I do find sometimes, again, go back to that isolation thing. I mean, how do you, when you're trying to deal with the likes of us in the, in the cockpit, this is about conflict resolution generally, isn't it? And creating better relationships, which of course is always a big, a major part of emotional intelligence. I mean, how do you deal with that? In tired, exhausted, you're trying to deal with the private, with, with the rich people's requests and about you running around in taxis, trying to pick up loads of food, you're trying to deal with the dynamic with looking after us in the front, you know that safety's involved. I mean, how do you how do you how do you help us to get on better? I suppose well, is a good well, question. We all, we all know that the pilots are worse than our than our fussiest clients. <laughs> Very true. Uh, <laughs> what, me, me included? <laughs> um, you don't have to was, answer that. You don't have to answer that. Of not, well, it's the only thing that that's missing in the flight deck is a call bell, I suppose, but we're generally in close enough proximity that that can be difficult too. Um, there was plenty of, no, you weren't, you weren't really that difficult, just there was plenty of nights where, well, quite like you just made me a cup of tea, mm. quite, quite a lot of nights that we'd spend, we'd do really long flights from Asia to to the US and things like that. Mm. Um, and we'd have lots of nights in the galley with our herbal teas yes. chatting. Uh, I I think I don't I'm I mean I think that's its perspective. It's each flight attendant would give you a different answer to that. But I think what we what we all hold as a common um, superpower or skill as as however you may, may want to put it, um, it's yeah. I mean, at times it can be really testing because we do work in a very um, pressure cooker kind of environment, you know, like all the things that you just uh, expressed. You're running around, you're jet lagged, you're trying to, I'm trying to, you know, I don't have more than two hands and I'm trying to mm. wrestle different bags and running around a different city that I'm maybe not accustomed to to get all these things and then also make sure that I've gotten everything else sorted and the clients things sorted and the, the yeah, you're adhering to a lot of different pressures. Uh and I, but I think it's just about trying to always remain professional. Um, we we have to be a master of personalities with our clients, yes. so yeah. that also has to, um, you know, we all have some kind of. Uh, well, in general, I think that flight attendants have a very good sense of being able to anticipate intis- anticipate others' needs. Mm. Um, so I think it's also about something to do with that. I mean, in any environment, it doesn't even matter if you work in any industry, you're always going to have to um, manage different personalities. So 
it's just about having patience. I think the older I've gotten, I've gotten worse at doing it, but 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 it's always a challenge, and and uh, it's just a part of life, I suppose. Yeah, and what about saying no? <clears throat> we talked about some sometimes on previous operations when you get demanding crews that want to say, "What well, we're going to have breakfast?" I found this, um, you know, particularly with sort of military ex-military crews, right, we're all having breakfast at 8 o'clock and we're going to meet in the bar at 6 o'clock in the evening. <clears throat> and I, I really don't like having that restriction because I think, you know, we spend an awful lot of time with each other. Right. And when I'm in the right mood for it, I think I'm a particularly sociable person. But when I'm not, we're going to the P's the, the, the and the Q's, right. trying to satisf satisfy somebody else's expectation or loneliness, whatever, and, and being able to say no without... Feeling that the other side of the team, you got you got the ladybird on there as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> infested by ladybirds in this house. But I f yeah, feeling that the other side of the of the team are gossiping, saying, "Well, where's Brie or where's Ben? They're not very friendly. They're not." I know you told me a story a, a while ago of a guy who said, "Well, you're not a contract guy." Who came in and said, "Well, you're no fun because you had a lot to do. You know, you, you've got your other sideline business, which we'll talk about mm -hmm. now, and trying to manage again manage that expectation. I mean, it's, that's the same in life." Generally, isn't it really that sometimes we want to to be with people, sometimes we don't. But being able to say no in the right circumstance and soothe people is just incredibly difficult, isn't it really? Yeah, it is really difficult. And I think, um, again, probably the older I've gotten and the more I value my own time and, you know, for, diff for, for whatever different reasons, you know, I want to read or I, even just the littlest simple things, um, I think it also depends on the operation. You know, when we were at Nissan, I think that I used to really go away and enjoy that because we weren't like maybe we'd do, you know, a four-day trip here or a seven-day trip there. Mm. And then, you know, I my home time was distributed differently. So sometimes I'd take that as, okay, I'm away on the road and I'm away now for four days. So it's just two days of flying and two nights of crew time, mm. you know, and that mm. was – I had my head in the game for that and, and I really yeah. found that that was really fine. Um, but now, for instance, like when I go away, I'm on an 18-day rotation, generally speaking. So for 18 days, I don't want to be with the crew for 18 days. Mm. Um, we have our own personal things to do in that time and like 18 days is a long time to be away from home. We have had like, you know, I don't have a family um, but a lot of people have their own families and their own things at home and their own admin to keep up with. And so that can be quite a difficult thing to have mm. to manage. Mm. Um, I think it's it's just about managing personalities and, and I've figured out ways of being able to say, you know, I'm not available right now and just trying to be as polite as possible and, and you know, it's, it's a constant it's a constant thing that you've kind of got to always deal with and it'll never mm. go away. It'll always be there with some people um, figuring out what you say no and mm. what you say no to and what you go to. And But, yeah, it, that is a challenge for me on the road. I do find that as well. It's, um, you know, I have a lot of things, a lot of interests and, and that keeps me busy and I'm very happy with my own company and mm. I also like to go out and take myself out for my own walks and just explore and, um, and that's no disrespect to the people that I'm with, but I just there's always things for me to do. So, yeah, it's it's a hard thing, and I, I think that there's not just flight attendants, but I'm sure that there's flight attendants that always want to be with pilots, probably as well, or always want to be around company. I think it goes all all around in a crew environment. Um, it can be a difficult thing to to manage that dynamic, but yeah. It's ongoing, isn't it? Isn't well, it is. Yeah. It is ongoing, and some some personalities are easier to deal with. I mean, right. you, you and I became friends very quickly because we both know that we enjoy our own individual companies. Right. We're very happy in our own personal space. We do a lot of self development work, and we're you know interested in just wandering around, very happy, very confident, just to wander around and do our own thing. But when the time comes for a good conversation, and yeah, it, does that mean to say that we're we're any any easier to get on, but well, I've certainly found my conflicts with other people because they don't understand why I don't fit into their regime, and I right. they don't fit into my regime or my way of thinking things, and that is definitely the biggest challenge I think in our our business. You know, on the other hand, I've done airline flying, <clears throat> so have you, um, and you can be going away with a group for three days, 
um, and you get on one or two people. People fra the groups fragment a little bit. Very rarely do you have a crew that stays together. And sometimes I, I found that the pilots just won't go anywhere ne near each other down route. Right. And but you've got other crew members that can get involved, and then they're not missed. And the dynamic of when there's only three of us, if somebody's missing, it becomes quite potent, and, right. and gossip can take over. Particularly as Correct. we spend a lot of time in hotels uh, trying to fill the time. And I found the ones that can't fill the time, they're itching, desperate. There's plenty of pilots I've flown with who are desperate to go flying. Oh, you know, I, I don't, why can't we go flying? I love flying, but I also love not flying. So if we go flying, that's great. If not, that's that's great. Well, but it's, I do it's, feel it's only evil because we don't want to fly and we, the longer we don't fly, then we don't want to go and do it and we get called. We go, we think, oh, God, we don't, I don't want to do this. But then but then it's the opposite. You've got too much, t you know, time and you Itching to get back to flying. We're never happy. That's yeah. True. We're never happy. <laughs> it's human beings, isn't it? We've yeah. all got too much or too little, yeah. too little, too much. But, yeah, I, I think that, uh, yeah, again, I think the seed of all this is, is developing self-interest, interest that you can spend time on your own doing some studying. I, I think we have a very unique situation where we have a huge amount of spare time, which no other profession paid the same amount as us has that privilege. And... I find it frustrating when I think people are hanging around, they come down and they watch the whole box series day in, day out. And you think there's so much that you can develop and now you're frustrating and that frustrated, you're staying in a five-star hotel and now bitching about the food. It's not right. You know, the waiters are not doing this, not that right. And I had a crew, yeah, we've, we've had this before. I had a crew in, in one of my jobs that literally disintegrated because they spent too much time finding things that were wrong instead of actually doing something constructive with their time. But you do really constructive stuff with well, your time. Well, I think that from a human, I'm very fascinated in, and we both share this, and I think that's why also we've gravitated to one another or we have a million, a million things to talk about. But it's, um, it's the human condition that mm. I'm fascinated about, human interaction and human condition. But it's a human condition, you know, that in itself, we're so spoiled, we're so fortunate, mm. we, but we have so much time to complain. And I think that, <laughs> you know, we're very famous for that. Like, mm. you know, breakfasts, there's a lot of complaining going on. There's a lot of things to just be negative about. But I'm trying, I suppose, in my life, I'm at a stage where I, you know, it's my choice whether I, what I react to. And you and I have had this conversation quite a lot. Mm. I don't want to sit there and listen to that negative chat as much, you know, as, as much as I can possibly, like, it, there's a place for it. We all have to have that and we all have things that we need to vent about. Um, so there's that place for that too. But, uh, yeah, I don't want to be around it as much. It's not a very nice energy to, to be around. There's mm. definitely a lot of that that happens. Mm. And, yeah, I mean, like, the, I have a million things. I don't know. I always in my life just have things that keep can keep me busy, you know. Mm. I'm reading or exercising, going out for a walk, researching the restaurant in that city that I can go and try or maybe I'm researching the next place that I can go and purchase things for the plane from or going to look at a new supermarket or like there's plenty of, of work-related things that we can keep ourselves busy with as flight yeah. attendants too on the road because we need to make sure that we're aware of, of what our clients possibly like, what particular things we can source in different places. Um, also, I've never really flown for anybody that, like I have a lot of friends that seem to fly for, for people that maybe only fly a few times a month. I've never had that kind of schedule. It's, mm. it's, busy, busy, you know, busy. it's pretty general that I'm like on the go most of the time. So, I, I mean, although I've had still my fair share of downtime, um, that's when I'm generally catching up on my own personal life more so than really just having a lot of downtime or a lot of maintenance time where the aircraft goes into maintenance and I'm just sitting at home. I've never really had that kind of situation. So, yeah. You're always on the go. And actually that's, yeah. that's another question, isn't it, is that we, you can go from I, I've had both, so really busy or sometimes Two weeks I'm on the ground in Aspen, for example, right. which is great. Oh, I've got, I know, well, I, I know. <laughs> so nice. I know, but it's interesting. You know, sometimes you go down to breakfast and people are bored. I think, how right. can you be bored? I just I climb a mountain right. for days on end. But on the other hand, you know, when you're when we're exhausted, we go to different time zones. You're con constantly flying. I know you're looking after 
everybody. You're flying on different aeroplanes. You're flying with uh, different uh, different cultural backgrounds as well. How do you deal with that exhaustion? Because it getting fatigue is a big thing in our business now. There's a lot mm -hmm. of studies going into it. It's a big thing that we train on, recognizing right. when we're when we've got to that stage of the sleep has accumulated, the lack of sleep and the tiredness has accumulated to a point when mentally we're going downhill. Mm -hmm. Physically, our decision making becomes a problem. Safety then becomes a problem, and just yeah, I mean, in a world that's full of mental health issues, that can escalate. And yeah, you, can, you see that. I heard of a 650 pilot who took his own life uh, recently, and you know, that's tragic. And we know the German wing sky. We're not allowed to express our problems emotionally because we get our licenses taken away. But you know, how do we deal with that? So it's all about health for me. You know, are we sleeping properly? Are we eating proper? Eating properly? Are we engaging with people? Mm -hmm. Are we withdrawing? When you feel exhausted, what do you? How do you deal with that? Well, I think that you've got. I think that this subject's fascinating in itself as well because we need more attention in this area. So that's one side of things that I maybe I'll touch on in a second. But I think um, from a personal point of view, I mean, I think I even commented to you a few days ago. It's I had just had, I've just recently done two night flights, and <laughs> it really kills me these days. It's not like I was when I was flying when I was twenty six years of age, when I first started flying. Um, the night flights were a little bit easier to take. Mm. These days I really do struggle and maybe it's I appreciate my, uh, maybe I have not as many night flights so when I do have them they really kind of knock me around. Um, but uh, I think the older I've gotten the more I've really had to hone into, yeah, when I am at home I'm very conscious of trying to make sure like I recently just got really sick and that's not been a thing that I it's not not usual for me um and so I was like right I really need to be very conscious of making sure I sleep the eight hours a night and making sure my health is really on track and making sure I'm really really conscious with what food you know I'm putting um in my mouth and and not I'm I am quite a conscious eater anyway but you know just like doing the extra because as you get older yeah, it's natural it's yeah. yeah you've got to you've got to really but not everybody as you well know in our industry like anything is is conscious of those things so there's pe people and we even have flown with them together that you know worried me because of their extra weight or whatever we're, we're flying in a very small like we've discussed, you know, environment in a, in a very tight environment, mm. and from a safety perspective as well, that's also not a great thing. And so, yeah, I suppose we there could be a lot more attention paid to that area. Um, I think in corporate aviation, especially, and I think it needs to be more of a conversation. And that's why, I mean. We've had plenty of conversations leading up even to your podcast. I'm there cheerleading you on the yeah. sides. Come on, Ben, like encouraging you all the time to do this because I think it's a fantastic venture. We need someone to be our advocate, to be in there, you know, speaking about this on behalf of this industry, mm -hmm. um, encouraging people, giving people more awareness to these areas because, I mean, even the company that I currently work for, we we have, you know, a briefing before a flight and, kind of goes around is everybody okay no one in that situation is really going to probably say no I'm not feeling okay today you know so there's different ways that we can start being a little bit more aware of these things but it's a conversation and the conversations need to start coming yeah um and I think that the yeah. more that people just like anything I mean mental health is and suicide with males like it's been a thing that my brother as well, he has friends and my dad has friends that they do a walk in Australia that they're involved in a charity mm. um, that talks about male suicide and male mental health. And because it is less likely that males, you know, speak about their emotions and things, it is a really important dialogue to start and we are in a quite male-heavy environment mm. and it's something that, you know, just like on the football field or the cricket pitch, it has that kind of male club vibe and it, that needs to start being changed. So I think that what you're doing is is a brilliant thing because I think that need, this is all those sleep problems and everything. It's all stuff that starts to deteriorate our mental health, especially yeah. when we're environment, in environments where, yeah, jet lag plays a part and, you know, our health suffers because we're eating on the road and we're eating out all the time. We're not 
we don't have the same bi- access to the same vitamins that other people. You know, mm. I've I've uh, suffered a lot from that, and mm. I have thyroid issues, and I I often feel really tired. That I have to be really, really on top of making sure that I'm constantly conscious and thinking about those things to make sure that I maintain my health. So, yeah, it's a it's a an extra pressure of our like our job, I think, in our, in our industry mm. in particular. Mm-hmm. But isn't it really thinking? I, I'm studying gut health at the moment. Mm-hmm. Dr. Stephen Gundry, who I'm recommend, recommending his book, The Plant Paradise, oh. because I, I think we're in the last 50 years, as he talks about, we're destroying ourselves with the food that we're putting inside us, of us. And people say we have five vegetables a day, but we're putting the wrong vegetables inside us, the ones that give us uh, lectin problems from tomato skins, cucumber skins and seeds and things like that. We don't understand that. And on top of that, we think we're eating a healthy diet by trying to do that. It's When stress takes over, we grab for the sugar. Right. And we put that inside that that's going to cause more problems from the inside. Our gut gets hammered even more. We lose even more sleep. We are more and more stressed, and it just goes in the wrong direction. And for me, I'm realizing as I'm getting older and older is that you have to be so disciplined mm-hmm. with that. And I do see on the flight deck, I see sometimes on the 10-hour flight, I see some of the guys having four or five different cans of Coke. Right. You think they're going to go pop at any any minute. You know, There's just a, such a lack of awareness and in personal health, food-wise and emotional and even spiritual, you know, disconnection, classic thing, spiritual health is going out and connecting with the environment, connecting with each other. Blokes isolate themselves. Two things they do when they're stressed or things aren't going well, they isolate themselves, put a rope around their neck or they, they punch, you know, right. go down, go down the path. lots of anger pub. management yeah, issues. Lots yeah, of anger management issues. And I do think that it's something that you guys um, the, the, you know the female, the female perspective, which we have both inside of us, us males as well. We need to develop that big time. And I do think that the the message you have a big responsibility from the female side of things to help change us men on that front. And I, uh, it's a huge responsibility, particularly in the corporate world when it's just you and mainly mainly men. Have you flown with uh, female pilots? That have I actually have never. No, unfortunately not. In com- commercial, yes. But I don't recall ever in corporate, and I've been flying corporate now for, wow, um, like 10 years. Mm. Yeah, it's quite sad, really. I would yeah. like to fly with. Yeah. yeah well, I haven't for fun. 20 years. I've got a couple of, couple of friends who are uh, ladies. In fact, they were, we were first officers, so I've never actually flown with a, you know, I have one, one female captain. flight. Yeah, captain. But, you know, I'm very keen for, uh, the the girls to come in the flight deck and not try and be try, not try and match the traditional male ego. Right. I think we need to blend this understanding. The men need to understand their feminine sides without compromising their masculine sides. Knowing how to emotional intelligence is all about that, isn't it? It's about right. reading the situation. Sometimes we need to be uh, uh, assertive and enthusiastic, you know, which is a classic male trait. Um, and sometimes we need to be compassionate and nurturing and kind and empathetic and things like that which is more of a female trait Mm -hmm. we have every capability of having both both those sides in us yeah um but you know i i I see that often you you got you girls having to sue these very male egos in the cockpit and i you know i I want to find ways to to help deal with that and i do find that i come Mm -hmm. across some some big resistance on that front because i'm i'm compromising millions of years of cultural cultural background but we have to change that we have yeah. to change it no i agree with you and i think that you questioning that is one thing and one thing that's quite brave and courageous but then also i mean i've definitely come across some uh, a multitude of stories of of some you know situations where yeah like i'm kind of blown away by the conversations or the comments or and sometimes it's a ch- I, um, I don't know if I'm necessarily proud of my actions in those situations from memory to not have spoken up or not have advocated for the situation. Unfortunately, sometimes because you are you are the the 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm not speaking on behalf of. Uh, I don't. I don't have enough of these conversations with other flight attendants. Uh, but you know, um, we should question sometimes some more of the behaviors, the behavior that we sometimes see. Mm. Or I, sorry, that I have seen. I should have questioned some of that behavior. Mm. Um, however, sometimes it is a little bit difficult when you are the odd one out let me put it like that yes. because you know there are two males and then I sometimes do for, you know you're going for dinner together and you spending time together and you're it is a uh, there is more a lot more of that testosterone than the the progesterone energy and sometimes I've chosen to remain silent rather than speaking my mind on the situation, mm. not from a safety perspective but more so from a dynamic perspective mm. or whatever the situation is at the time um, because there's not space for it. Mm. And sometimes, you know, the, 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 the odd times I have spoken up, I haven't been, it hasn't, felt welcomed right. well you, so you effectively is, find yourself isolated in yeah, that situation yeah Just and sometimes you know the, the 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 further on i've got sometimes i've gotten to the stage where i've isolated my because i am happy with my own company so that's that's a plus i suppose in this industry like mm. i am okay to be go and do my own thing uh but uh, yeah i sometimes probably feel that i've isolated myself from the situation because I just want to be with them in a professional environment rather mm. than also having to socialise with them. Mm. Yeah, it's a really difficult thing to, to deal with. But I think, too, you bring up the isolation situation. I know you wanted to kind of talk about that because I think it is a big thing in our in our environment too, right? Like mm. it's a very it can be a very isolating job. Like not just are we under so many environment environmental pressures, but just also that it's a really difficult mm. thing for mental health. Mm. It is, yeah. To be stuck in a hotel. I was in Kazakhstan for six and a half years and in the winter it was I think oh, my coldest brutal. day was it was. And my coldest day on, on the ramp, I was, uh, was kind of supervising moving the aeroplane out the hangar. It was minus forty six. So you you're less inclined to be going outside the hotel. So you're stuck in yeah. a hotel for a long time. And again, as I said, that the, the crew on that situation ended up disintegrating for various different reasons. And I ended up taking over the operation and wanted to make some positive changes and it didn't go down well with the crew. And actually they mutinied on me and they came to me saying that I didn't have any leadership skills. I never, I didn't listen, um, which was, you know, it was a, it was a diff very difficult time for me. Mm -hmm. And I've really tried to understand the psychology behind that. And I probably didn't listen as well because I didn't understand the depth of the feeling of isolation. They'd got to a stage where they, Nothing was right. The, the country wasn't right. The hotel wasn't right. The owner wasn't right. The management company wasn't right. And they kind of morphed into this, into this group together. And I took over and wanted to change things and develop good relationships with the, with the Kazakh representatives. And, and then I ended up losing tr their trust because they thought that I was going to push things too far. We were right. going to lose our jobs and things like that. And it was a really interesting thing. But I, increasingly, I've actually given up drinking. Now it's been six months, which is unusual in in our industry. Yes. And I actually felt in the last operation that, that that really set the cat amongst the pigeons because it was very much we're a team together. We go down, we have a drink, and me saying I'm not going to have a drink actually caused a bit of a problem. I was very right. happy to go out for a bite to eat, and but I, I felt that I in itself isolated you. Yeah, without even it net being a necessity, you know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And but I just uh, in a way I had faith that it was my value system and it made in terms of my general health and my focus and concentration and feeling of well-being it was my time to give up drinking right. you know, I was always a good drinker I think but actually I did notice down the line that other people had the confidence to say no themselves and I think that's one of the things isn't it not to withdraw and just think I'll, I'll be on my uh, I'm only ever going to be on my own is to know that actually stand strong even though you feel isolated, just know that other people are learning from you and and it, they, you will come come through. And I, I've learned that now that I'm talking to a lot of people, giving them the courage to actually stand up and just change the dynamic. Yeah. To, you know, to change the dynamic, you've got to you've got to you've got to be you've got to be able to 
to weather the storm and you're ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Trailblaze through it and all those things, you know. So, well, you, just, yeah, I think to stand and be an individual in those things and do something a bit different, you have to be kind of brave to just be okay to do those things by yourself. And like we were just talking about this afternoon, you know, you're going to always disappoint people. Yeah. Everyone has different expectations. And I think it's this industry, like what I think sometimes get gets missed and I think because everything is always so fast and we're moving so fast all the time and we're, you know, going through different time zones all the time and it, it, it always kind of feels like we're chasing our tail a little bit. Mm. Um, and I think that because of that, sometimes people don't give actual the right kind of like reflection or thoughts to the environment. But it's just like life. Like we wouldn't go out and be friends with everybody that we meet in the street yeah that's coming that's in front of us all the time or you know we don't go to every yoga class or boxing class or whatever class that we go to uh, even you know hiring an accountant or and we don't vibe with everybody we're looking for the the person that resonates with us right so i do find that that in this industry it's quite in- interesting that yeah people do want to hang out all the time it might we might not necessarily choose to socialize with one another but we're put into this situation where we have to and therefore the same thing like if there's someone that wants to go and do something a bit different mm. i've flown with all kinds of different people mm-hmm. and not having a drink is like the least weird thing that i could think you know i mean i like to go to the crew lounge as much as anyone else and have a Mm. glass of wine but you know i think that that that's a really sad thing that 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 has to be something that ostracizes people especially Mm. to when for the for the times that we do socialize with one another yeah you we're all we all are feeling isolated so why not just like get together and just all have a nice time together whether we have a drink or not you know yeah strange but it is strange isn't it and again that that down comes down to the classic emotional health if somebody isn't fitting in to the way that you want them to do it doesn't mean to say that they are any less of a value and right. in fact if you're finding that difficult then we should be looking at ourselves right and i certainly certainly there's, there's one guy I just couldn't believe that i wouldn't have a drink and wouldn't go out and you know i'd go home at 11 o'clock rather than two o'clock in the morning even if we were flying the next day just and you know oh same age or in 50 in the 50s and i just thought you know, the, the neediness, the the emotional unhealthiness of that is, yeah, I mean, it's worrying. It's very worrying. I actually felt sorry, quite sorry for him as well. It's all, you know, very lonely individual. And there's a difference between loneliness and being alone, isn't there? Mm-hmm. I, uh, I don't feel I lonely in my life. I'm happy to go off even though I'm on my own. I'm alone. I know that I can walk into somewhere and sit in a cafe and observe and think about human psychology and how people behave and read a book and think oh yeah that works out i've seen it's you know you're doing a study you're doing a study all the time that's one of the benefits of our job well you're also very curious so you've got a lot of things to keep yourself busy with all the time because you there's i don't know the last time i was bored because there's you know there's always something to find to do to learn about to, mm. you know enhance your knowledge or mm. so i kind of feel very fortunate in this position that we do have yeah, like you said before, quite a lot of downtime that we're, I mean, you have to pay people for their time. We still are giving our time a lot of the time. Mm. We're away in a different country and that has to, and like we've just discussed throughout this whole conversation, that is, there's a lot of environmental pressures that get put on us for that reason. And so we should be well that we work out remunerated or remunerated. Yeah. <laughs> um, remuneration. You need yeah. to look that up. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that needs to, to, to be an ind- indication as part of our position. But, yeah, I like that we have some extra time to be able to, to, to do those extra things if we so choose to. Mm, absolutely. But it's a choice. Well, it is a choice and that's, it's health, isn't it? How do we recognise if we're not, if we're going down an unhealthy route and the problem like any social or business situation when it comes to humans is that people who are i the way i see it who are unsure about themselves will either withdraw and try and hide away or they'll try to 
get to the next stage of, say, the step up on the management ladder, but they're not confident to get to that level and they want to institute change by controlling everything. They can't cope with the fact that people might think differently or question the way they're doing it and they try and control even more and more and more. Then the tension builds, the trust breaks down and then somebody explodes one way or another. And I think that seems to be quite common in our industry. I've, I've, I haven't seen a lot of good leadership teams in corporate aviation and I, I know that people will probably rear up when I say that but I think you know that the source of that is to is self-awareness the core of, of emotional intelligence is self-awareness of understanding actually do we know what's going on inside are we feeling la lack of confidence are we trying to hide away are we developing that admitting we've made mistakes sorry I got that wrong but I'm learning right because then we can regulate emotions and then we can start to motivate ourselves to learn a little bit more, bring other people into the sphere, build better relationships, help deal with conflict and things like that. Um, and I do, I, 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 I have to say that, you know, you on many of occasions uh, have, have helped me in some difficult situations up the mm. front there. Blow and smoke at my... <laughs> yeah, you are. But, you know, again, it's the empathetic side, which comes right. from the female side, and I would like to 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 change that in our particular industry and mm -hmm. it just comes down to those leadership qualities leadership is just kind of thrown around everywhere now isn't a great leadership but it's a real corporate thing to say well, it's actually about understanding yourself so that you can then move on and, and support and help others mm -hmm. and i think that like what you were saying about your kazakhstan operation what i was going to say then too and you've just said again there's not there's not many flight departments that you've flown with that have a great leadership framework and i think i probably would I'd have to agree with that in some way or another. Like there's always some areas that could definitely be improved. Um, and sometimes it's re like I think it's resources. There's a lot of slap bang kind of stuff that we need to just get done. It's, a, it's very reactionary sometimes rather than the other way around. Um, I think, you know, it's an expensive, um, it's already a very expensive uh, industry. And so maybe they don't put enough resourcing into the right framework sometimes for our for the management part of things. Um, however, yeah, I would agree with that. And I think in comparison, like, for instance, when we worked at Nissan, um, it was a corporate company that had a, a, a framework, not to, not to say anything about the management department there. We had a great team, but I think a corporate we worked for a corp corporation that had a framework that, you know, they had all of the right things in place. So therefore our flight department was probably given a little bit more of the right frameworks. Mm. Um, and I think that there's a lot of people, and I'm sure that you would agree with me and probably many people that we know would agree with, but there's a lot of people that make their way up in aviation because they're in the right place at the right time, yes. but not necessarily because they're qualified or does anyone put the training or, or training into them to qualify them mm. to be in that role? Mm. Um, and, I, and that's unfortunate because I think that we could all be developed in a much better way mm. uh, if we had better frameworks than that. I think CRM, for, for instance, also could be um, reinvented yes. much better to a much better level if we had those better frameworks, if we had people in place that actually were th were more oper like thinking about things from an operational point of view of how do, how do we actually um, grow our staff, you know, just like any other corporation, like that. Yeah, yeah, we're in aviation, but it does. What does that mean that we can't also still mm. be developed as yeah, be individuals creative. and and mm. bring? We could bring so much okay, we have our flight duties, but, like, we could still bring better um, better elements to yeah. the department because maybe this person's trained in that or, they, like, take take different people and bring mm. more things into that particular operation, for instance. So mm. I, I'm maybe not articulating it very well, but no, I think no, it could mean. be enhanced. Uniqueness, much, uniqueness you know, recognising the uniqueness. And right. rather than trying to stamp, we live in a world, uh, we work in a world of, of standard operating procedures but that doesn't, that's great because that puts the skeleton together, but then we need to put the flesh on the bones, don't we? We right. need to understand the uniqueness of individuals. We can't expect every pilot to fly the same way, every flight attendant to operate 
the same way. We need to understand that some might be better at preparing this kind of food. Some might be better at helping somebody who's got a problem in, you know, in their, in, you know, a health problem or something like that. Nurturing can deal with conflict. Other people are better at doing the public speaking type thing. And I, I think that's, again, the, the taking interest in, in somebody. Emotion, True, emotional that, health is and, taking interest in other people. And building on that, but then also, you know, like, uh, I mean, we could all, we, this is like another breakfast talk and crew lounge talk that happens all the time. Like, how could we do things better? And everyone always has their best solutions, you know. Mm. Um, but uh, nothing really ever ends up getting put in place. It's just kind of like shooting the breeze. Mm. Uh, but I do think that, you know, like there, there could be a lot done, not just from enhancing the operational side of things but also from working with the people that you've got like mm-hmm. what training department what training could we give them that really would enhance these people so that they go on and I don't know I'm a big advocate to to mentoring and like I would like to eventually get to a space where maybe I help people I know that you're very interested in the same thing mm. um, and I think you know if what how great would it be to be the one that that what your reputation precedes you to to hear that oh that Ben La Fleming he just helped me out so much he was so great like mm. that's just it's about passing it on it's mm. it's making sure that the next the people coming up after you are are helped out you know mm. for instance this flight department that you currently now work for okay now. Obviously, this would be something that you should be paid for, but like maybe it's a t- maybe it's a team um, focus. For instance, you know, maybe the your your co pilot has a skill that he could teach you. Yeah. You know, and it's about getting everyone in and doing a workshop. For instance, or mm. now not everybody's going to be interested in that. You and I are more curious to go. Mm. Oh well, I'd like to learn about what you could teach me. But I think also, yeah, flight departments could do much better at being a little bit more professional lack of cooperation and having that kind of framework and there's mm. not one that I've worked for really that has that let's really grow our people in yeah yeah develop the CRM and the crew resource management which I always think you know people say CRM they don't actually know what it means it's right. about how to develop human potential you've got to be interested in recognizing it in the first place and I've just joined a, a super new company I'm very excited about about it and there's a very dynamic leadership team as far as I can tell and very interested in my interest in human factors and I really hope to be able to, to to be able to push that forward finally in this mm-hmm. particular organization because Brilliant. at the end of the day we need it for for human flourishing I yeah. mean really we don't live in a world now where all we have to think about is surviving like we've done for most of the millions of years we actually have the opportunity to well, create incredible and abundance absolutely we really do so we need to move it to the next level blokes as I said, just to repeat, need to develop their empathetic side. You know, ladies need to develop their assertive sides mm-hmm. a little bit more. But unless we have some a leadership, <clears throat> somebody in leadership who's, <clears throat> excuse me, unless we have somebody in leadership who's prepared to nurture that and pull it out, then we're going to be stuck. And then everybody's going to be looking over their shoulder. Unfortunately, aviation is very much... Uh, money critical. So as soon as something goes wrong, we can all lose our jobs. I lost my job four times effectively in the last five or six years, I think it is. Um, and so but people are living in fear. When you're living in fear, you don't have that same creative opportunity to take risks Absolutely. and try and stand out. But we need to be more open. <clears throat> we need to be more open about our emotions, and I think that's that's a way forward, certainly. Yeah, for sure. I agree with you, and it needs to be encouraged. That's, I think, one of the... The roadblocks definitely needs to be constantly encouraged. You need to feel that, yeah, that the, it's going to be, you're going to be listened to, that there's a platform for that. And yeah, be that's listened a hard to. thing too, I think. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, especially too, like between the dynamic of the, the cockpit and the, the, the cabin. Um, I mean, that's what we're constantly trying to work on with CRM, right? But it needs to be a constant conversation too, you know, flying with you, for instance, I would have known that I would have been able to come up at any time and that there was an open door policy, open (laughs) door, Um, but, you know, that I could have come and told you anything and I wouldn't have felt stupid. But it's that, 
maybe stupid's not the right word, but like there is sometimes a little bit of, I feel sometimes a condescending kind of attitude can come across in that situation because I don't know as much technical stuff as you, but I'm your eyes and ears in the back. So it's constantly encouraged of me, but then sometimes I'll say things and I don't necessarily know how to explain it or, and kind of I've gotten looks before where I'm like, this silly girl, you know, and it's never nice to feel that way, but I, I live by the way of, you know, no question stupid and and I want to be able to have things explained to me and vice versa, you know, not everyone's going to know everything about everything. So, yeah, I think that it's important that that that's something that's constantly spoken about and that there's a change in that too. Mm, I think you're absolutely right. Being up genuinely, being interested in somebody listening to them understanding that they may be struggling on different levels is really important isn't it well it's for it's uh, at the end of the day like our primary concern safety right so mm. that's a real that's that comes down to safety and it I does think, you know does. like that's from a mental health perspective i think we need to be asking those questions you know in a flight briefing make sure that the question is asked or like we're checking in with our with, with our colleagues every now and then and making sure mm. we're aware of the possibilities of things that we can pick up on that people might not be right and and not jump into too, conclusions too quickly but like yeah. being aware because sometimes as well someone might just be going through something and that could be the end of their career. You know, you've got to be really very careful about mm. but, you know, being aware. and um, And then I think also... I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> Done that a few times today. But anyway, being aware. Yeah, being aware and just not jumping to conclusions. And effectively, you don't. It, it's easy to jump to conclusions if you criticise. You point the finger, say, "Well," and you know, little invalidate somebody, and that just goes, you know, lack of emotional understanding and, and, and intelligence as well. Yeah. We talked about some good stuff, haven't we? Isolation not being prepared to listen to each other, how to deal with different dynamics and, and health. It's a Pandora's box, really. It's a Pandora's I mean, there's box, a lot of it? things that really need to, <clears throat> to, to be spoken about. People need to start being a bit more aware of. It is a real issue, as you've discussed with a few more of your um, the people on your podcast. You know, like I, I loved Ed. Ed's. Yeah. He, Ed was a former colleague of ours and mm. he, he has a lot to say and I have a lot of respect for what he's got to say and and he touched on a whole different kind of um, dynamic and then mm. Emma's was fantastic as well and she has a lot that she said that is really very um, current mm. for the climate that we've recently been going through and her, um, what was her... Uh, the thing during COVID that she ran. Yeah, yeah, Project Wingman. Project Wingman, like fabulous, how inspiring. Um, But there's just, there is a lot to, a lot of dialogue that we need that that I don't think has been talked about and I think that it's starting to come up in a lot of other areas in life now. A lot of other industries have already, are already way ahead of, Mm. of corporate aviation in these kind of chats and I think that you're starting a great dialogue. I think it just needs to keep going. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed our face-to-face sofa conversation. I hope you managed to understand what I was saying, despite my <laughs> my impediments there. But it's been um, it's been such a conversation, and we will continue this on. and And like all my guests, I'd love you to come back at some time in the future oh. because then we can reflect on what we were talking about before. So. Well, like I was saying to you this afternoon, I think you're about to blow up and get really famous, so he might <laughs> he might renege on that and take it back. Uh, I hope for the right reasons. Just little old Bree might not get invited <laughs> back to the sofa, but <laughs> it's been a pleasure and hopefully so. Yeah, thank you, my love. Thank you. So, yeah, again, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And, of course, any comments that you have on any of the subjects, isolation, emotional intelligence, you name it, please let us know because this dialogue, as Bree said, we need to have this dialogue. It's really important for human flourishing in our industry and humanity generally. So please let us know in in those comments below. But until the next video, please remember to keep it in the greens. (laughs) 